Big red button is pushed. Let's fucking do it. Something for everyone, dude. Episode 48. I'm here with Sentinels. First full band time and out down here in New Jersey. We got the hotel vibe going on. A little different. Thanks for coming through, Kings. Uh, before we dive in, I like to get into plugs, get everything that you guys have to say out of the way before we get into the fun conversational stuff. Uh, so first off, I know we got a new EP that just came out and a tour coming up. Yeah, what are the exact details for that? Where should people find it? Where should people go get tickets? Uh, our new EP, In Limbo, is now out on Sharp Tone Records. You can get that everywhere digitally that you stream your music. Hell yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we have a European tour with Currents, Being as an Ocean, and Ocean's 8 Alaska. It's the so water sick. tour. Uh, <laughs> and we're coming to fuck shit up. Uh, yeah. th that is from February 1st to the 22nd, I believe. So, yeah, if you want to yeah. get your tickets, you can go to the link in our bio on Instagram or any socials and, you know, get your tickets there. Hell yeah. Perfect. I just had Brian on the other day and we were chatting about that from current. So the current plug. Uh, nice. My quick little plug here uh, is that I'm booking music videos for the new year. So if anyone's interested in music videos, I don't want to look at you guys as if you guys are all like in other bands outside of this. <laughs> um, but yeah, to the people at home, people listening, if anyone's interested in music videos, let's fucking do that shit. Um, Hit anyway. up your boy. Right into the fun stuff, dude. So Kenny, you're the new guy here. The new What's guy up? going How on. How you doing? Uh, uh, boo guy. Boo guy. Hey, I'm, new guy. So I'm not in the band. I'm actually. Bye. Uh, <laughs> right into it. So Feelings. I feel like joining this band is a nightmare because you guys are all so talented, so technical. And I feel like coming in as a vocalist here <laughs> seems like. Hang on. Hang on. It's just starting like you guys are all so talented it must be hard coming and it just sounds like oh this guy sucks <laughs> <laughs> let me rephrase that i think these guys are also talented that i think if i if i am these guys like joining them is the scariest people to join i think if i'm joining like a uh, a pop punk band where it's like three chords three fret like the simplest shit i'm like hell yeah anyone can step up and nail that i think when you're stepping over these guys it's like fuck how do you fit in like was there any nerves coming in what was the process of joining the band like um well i i knew the guys prior to joining or mm -hmm. even like talking about joining in general um, fun fact, like years ago, like I was talking to my friends all the time about Sentinels in general and like Thank said you. how like absolutely ridiculously difficult it would be to actually do it. Yeah. And uh, so I wasn't such a fucking dickhead. You fucking <laughs> 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 yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, it, it wasn't too crazy difficult to get adjusted to it because I was in bands previous to this that were like insane. Yeah. When it comes to timing and all that. So it, it wasn't too difficult. I was kind of used to weird patterns and stuff like that so i was able to get a hang of it i just practiced a shit ton yeah yeah and for you guys then is it tough to find like the fourth person to come in i know we've gone through a couple vocalists it's always been tough to find the, the exact perfect match and i know that now that we're kind of back on the open market again it must have been a really daunting thing to go okay who is the guy now what is the next step here yeah th this was uh <laughs> this was the the one that almost broke us yeah we were we were like is this even possible anymore? Yeah. And I, I think not to say like Kenny was like a fallback plan, but he was absolutely in the back of you our minds. Suck, this is the Kenny to say. <laughs> yeah, he was the here? bottom <laughs> of the barrel. <laughs> no, but I, I think that if there was going to be anybody else that we would give this like one last good chance with, it was Kenny because you know he's such a phenomenal vocalist. Like we were already very. You know good friends with him we hadn't got to like you know too deep like into the like the friendship and like the closeness in our relationship but then having him come along and be involved in the process before like officially you know vetting him in um we really got to know him and you know see what he's like on the road like do we want to kill this guy on the road or, or do we love him yeah, and, and it was great ago. exactly a year ago from now right with kenny kenny was filling in it was just march, about right? yeah, yeah it was like february march yeah. like a few months ago <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was like the obvious choice. It always seemed like, yeah. especially when like everything you know happened with Josh. Um, even when like before we got Josh, Kenny was kind of in mind already. So when this happened again, I feel it was like an obvious. But like Dave said, like we want to like kind of look around a little bit just to like make sure this and that. Yeah. And uh, also, Aaron Chaparian is in his other band, um, Dead Vectors, and we've been. He's always been like the silent member of Sentinels, Aaron. Interesting. So okay. having Aaron back. Kenny was also like another huge reason that we, we felt more comfortable with Kenny because Aaron is like, like I said, he like fits the mold yeah. perfectly. So anyone he trusts, we we trust. Oh yeah, 100%. bring this right up to you just a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> what makes him the like the unfound like the other member of Sentinels? In what ways? He, he he's right, just or? always like been been there from the beginning, like since the first EP that we did, Idols. Um, he's always just been. He he recorded it, you know, mixed and mastered it, and uh, he did our, our record after that or our EP after that. And then even when we went elsewhere with uh, Randy LaBeouf at Graphic Nature, mm -hmm. um, we uh, 
like still brought Aaron with us. Like Aaron was coincidentally interning at the studio at the same Hell time yeah. we went. So it was kind of like, but nothing really like the we didn't skip a beat That's with perfect. him. So yeah. he, he was still involved with that. Him and Randy became really good friends. And then he, he was in our last record process completely. And then he was in the in limbo release too. So he's always just been that contributor that's always been in the the mix that yeah. like we just really like overall value his opinion yeah because yeah. he can come in with drum ideas like gro like groove ideas or just the smallest little guitar details transition stuff lyrically he helped me on collapse like you know i, d I discussed to death you know and i still give him all the credit in the world because without him i would have been like stuck he's a genius too so, so yeah. yeah yeah a lot yeah. of people can just throw out ideas but he's are his ideas are Pretty golden. Aaron is God when it comes yeah. to music. I, he's insane. Like anything Shit's you need, he's got music. it. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. How like is how much how open are we to like taking in new ideas in the studio? And I've had this conversation in a couple different contexts recently. Of like, you don't want someone writing your song, but like a producer does help. Like it's not like you're going in there and just saying like this is only Sentinels, right? There is always someone. There is uh, Randy or whoever's yeah, helping yeah, adjust. Randy's like definitely putting like a, a hefty like amount into like our new album and even like oh, like post past music kind of thing. And so is Aaron. But we just kind of like give them the song. We start off like throwing pretty pro, and then like it's like usually like I would say like ten to fifteen percent. That's usually kind of changed throughout. But they help a lot, honestly. Yeah, yeah their especially it's like really good. I have to say, it's like small ideas, like things you wouldn't really think about, and they just add like I don't know, like a second difference, and yeah. it, it changes everything. Yeah. Have you ever had a moment of like, no, that's a good idea, but it's not a Sentinels idea? Plenty, yeah. yeah, th yeah that's definitely that's what helps, if anything, sometimes. Yeah, because I mean, there's sometimes that are even more major examples, like the, the the title track on the EP in Limbo. That song started off as something completely different. It was an idea, I think, from 2015, 16. Yeah, that was that was an old one. It, it was, was an old. It was almost kind of like an archives cool. thing, and because the whole the whole idea since the beginning of it was to do, you know, like essentially two like singles and then an interlude, but mm -hmm. you know a a worthwhile interlude, I guess. Yeah. So that song started off as like something completely different. Like it was like a tappy, pretty lead and with like the same kind of beat over and over again. And then the heavy part, everything else, like besides the heavy part was scrapped and we just completely rewrote it. And mm -hmm. like basically almost kind of tacked on a beautiful ending to it. And it just completed the whole thing. You can't forget and it's, the George of the Jungle type beat. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> George of the Jungle type beat. It is a shuffle. I, I learned that halfway through. The, yeah. the terms band, you describe their music like a jungle type beat. It's like, what it's the fuck so does that even funny, mean? But yeah. as you say, I'm like, oh yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, my dumb ass didn't realize that it was, you know, in the demo stages programmed to be a shuffle thing. <laughs> Because I just, my ears are so fucked up that, like, when I'm listening to it, I'm not realizing it's a shuffle. So when I'm tracking, Randy's like, it's not shuffling. I was like, this is a shuffle? <laughs> He's like, if I have to explain that's a shuffle to you, then I don't know what to tell you. you know? <laughs> and I was like, I should just give up drums right now. But, yeah, it was, you know, we got very experimental with it. And, like, that song is a perfect example. And I think it's one of my favorite things we've ever done, even though it's not, like, a full, full song. It's still so outside the box, and that's why I like it. Yeah, it definitely is a, a big one. I think producers too, when they come into play, they really like level up your band. I think if your band really wants to take like that extra step, um, I think like producing is or going to a producer is such a good way to, to go about it because you get that extra extra ear, that like set of fresh ears that mm -hmm. they've never heard it before, and they're just coming unbiased. You know, they're they're kind of just telling you what they think is a little weird, what they think could be a little better, even if it's small stuff like just doubling apart or like lowering the BPM like one or two just uh, anything makes a difference basically but then yeah. someone like randy coming in like having so many good ideas it's it's like easy it's to like just give him yeah energy. it's easy to give him the reins yeah. when, when we're kind of going through it because i mean <clears throat> our goal whenever we go to the studio is just leaving with the songs being better than what they were before mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. never been a worry when going to randy or aaron it's yeah. always been and way Lee. better it's like laughable it's the demos before <laughs> sometimes yeah. yeah uh were you in the studio when they were writing this or did you get like instrumentals and then top line or help dave top line them i guess i got the instrumentals and wrote uh vocals on top of it okay but i was there when we were recording it hell yeah and I know, dave you've done a lot of lyrics in the past were you guys collaborating on the top line or like we have lyrics here or yeah that... i didn't i didn't do as much this time i was pretty much like on like empty mm -hmm. when it came to lyrical mm -hmm. stuff, but I, collapse. <laughs> I, yeah, dr collapse absolutely drained me. I, I, yeah. I have some stuff in the tank for for next album, but like this time I was just like, because we yeah. were only uh, we were only there for a week or like ten days maybe. Yeah, I so, went back after for like a day just for like post production. Yeah, so like the uh, the whole like sitting there and you know you know re 
working parts and everything like that was taking a lot out of me and trying to relearn these new patterns, which are the most difficult like we've ever done. And then having to kind of think of lyrical ideas. I had like a, a, a map out like idea, like conceptually, which started like perfectly because of what he wrote for nomadic. And so he, he wrote his own lyrics and patterns to that. Mm -hmm. That was like part of the audition, right? Yeah, yeah. That was my audition track. It was that and, uh, embers. Yeah. 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 So I, I wrote that with Aaron, um, pretty much all the lyrics were mine. Aaron did help with structuring and whatnot. Uh, but then when we did go to Randy, uh, I wrote all of Glitch there. And, you know, the guys helped me with, like, a line or two here, yeah. figuring out patterns and whatnot. But, yeah, we just kind of banged that one out at the studio. Yeah, like, him and I got together for, for Glitch because it, it was, like, one of those little ideas. I'm like, I can't quite put this concept into writing, but this is what I have, like, and that's kind of where we went. And then when I saw what he had, we sat there and worked certain little passages together. But other than that, I, I, I didn't write like much lyrically to this, but I'm extremely proud of how it came out because of how quickly he wrote it and how quickly he was able to track it. You and know? I was vibing. <laughs> was. That, that was cabin awesome. is a vibe. Yeah, that was, cabin. that was a good track. I like that one a lot. I was stressing. He was vibing. <laughs> it was but a good time. It. I was just like... <laughs> doo -doo -doo. Were you guys in like an Airbnb cabin? Is that what you... That's like the new studio basically that Randy and Matt do Emma work out of. Yeah, it's, oh, it's so cool. nice. A little, yeah. It's real nice. It's, it's, it's a, a full lock cabin house. It's real tight. It's in Sussex. That area, yeah. Kind of like Docks on What's the address? Like complete <laughs> middle of nowhere. Here is the it's address. It's just a cabin. You know, you got to just teleport there. And you, uh, we're not yeah, giving yeah. it an address. That's sick. Yeah. I've heard a lot of bands, yeah. Dimensions to get yeah, there. just start knocking on cabins. You'll find it. <laughs> Does Randy live here? <laughs> just look for EQ. So. Yeah, right? I've heard, uh, yeah, plenty of bands going out into like the middle of nowhere to record and find the inspiration of it. It's cool to yeah, build the studio and have a permanent setup out there. I think the, the producer thing's always been interesting to me because like in a video when I'm getting ideas, I'm getting it from the band. So it's like, yeah, I can steal your idea. Like, this is going to be your idea in the end. But I think with a producer, my fear, or if I was in a band, my fear would be like, if he's mixing 10 of my friends' bands also, I don't want to get the other 10. I, like, I want to make sure that my, that Sentinels Same is unique time. from the other 10 things that he's working on. Like, how do you balance those two things? And I guess that's probably the job of a good producer where a, a bad producer gives everyone the same idea and yeah. a good producer is able to kind of tailor it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, how do you kind of navigate that thing of like, he's not Sentinels and it isn't. Uh, but like he is and in that time for that week for those 10 days like he is Sentinels. he's kind of a uh, yeah, yeah. yeah unwritten member I feel he's, he like records so many other bands that are kind of not our style like I mean Kubakan and stuff like that where it's just like but when it comes to us I feel like his production work like he like flourishes into some extent because we have that like ambient very like atmosphere kind of sound <laughs> to our backgrounds and everything and I feel that's like his bread and butter honestly yeah. but I feel like we definitely he like differ differentiates. Wow, I cannot speak. Differentiate. <laughs> I was gonna let Danny try to find that one. <laughs> you helped me out with enunciate last time, so I'm here to help him with differentiate. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's funny. Enunciate. Oh, wow, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. it, it's interesting though, because like with, with Randy, uh, even when he like mixes or goes about his production style and you know, all that, I feel like he goes about every band very differently. He doesn't. His goal is to, you know, differentiate each one of these these bands, and so easy. <laughs> now it's the word of the day. He's flexing. Like episode that. title if I use that. Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not even to like put ourselves like in like up above or whatever. I, we I think are the only band that sound the way we do that Randy produces at, at least now. Like he he did uh, produce Invent Animate in the past, Reflections in the past, but like those bands are all doing their own thing now and so like now with randy i feel like we're the one like super weird prog uh band with like a lot of atmosphere that he does like he also did chamber which is probably like the closest thing to us Ever. in terms of chaos yeah and, that and this band take life he did that yes. that was like life was yeah, yeah. both yeah. insane insane bands right yeah yeah, Which but, is what you want, right? Like, you want someone who works in the industry. You don't want to find, like, some pop producer and be like, oh, okay, you're going to be our guy. Like, yeah, you want someone yeah. with some experience. There's some middle yeah. ground there, I guess. Yeah. And I feel like Randy, like, pushes us out of the boundary that we're comfortable in which is cool because that's i think it, i think it helps yeah him working with a bunch of other different types of bands i think helps when we go to him too because i like that yeah it 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 helped it kind of i don't know he the ideas he comes up with are ideas that like i would never or none of us would even ever think of putting in as far as like ambience like i think on the, the yeah on the, the ep yeah he got a lap steel guitar like days before we went there so like the whole interlude track uh in limbo it was like him just going off on this laugh steel guitar, throwing it through a bunch of verb and like, that's cool. Just making it, and elevating it to like, too, yeah. And then, uh, what is the, 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 white the OP one? Yeah, he he just loves to like 
go and like he's like the guy to let go like i think he's the guy that like you want to just go crazy on your on your music yeah yeah he he doesn't care about like how dense like anything is like if it needs it it needs it so he he never minds like adding more and more layers and this and that i love that that stuff i love listening to ambient I think all of us do like just love listening to like the, the ambient, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the nice chill. All right, on Zimmer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the nice chill kind of stuff. Yeah. So he'll sit there for like twenty minutes on loop, just you know, tracking like different takes until the, like the right one comes out, yeah. and you know, it shows. It's know? like comforting to hear that because I think when in music videos, I have the same thing of like I I think metal videos are what I want to do the most of, but like. I've done a country video before and it was such a hard thing to like flip my brain and be like, all right, th- this camera's never shaking. We're going to make this as still and like as <laughs> steady as possible. Everyone's going to be pretty. And it's like, or yeah, sometimes when I work with a, a girl or a woman or someone who wants to be beautiful and pretty, it's like, that's not what bands normally want. Like that's a very <laughs> different thing to this. And it's like, yeah, I don't think I want to do that all the time, but it's a really good exercise to like, yeah, figure out how to do that and then come back to the, the sweet spot and find that overlap. So it's kind of comforting to hear you describe Randy's work in the same way of like, yeah, it's nice that he goes out and explores everywhere. Cause somebody comes back to us. He has 10 new influences and ideas and styles yeah. to come bleed into us. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the man, the man. Um, the man. Hell yeah. Uh, we started kind of with the in limbo title and we kind of, uh, glossed over the the in limbo period i assume that title comes from yeah you kind of mentioned there was a, a real thought of like we don't know if there's another sentinels record coming i assume the in limbo title is directly from that as you're writing this was, going yeah, we're in limbo right now yeah, yeah. It, it was it's very much a reflection of you know where we were at as a band mm-hmm. like the the three of us like like uh like over a year ago, just in the middle of a tour, like questioning like whether or not we could finish the tour, you know, finish our obligations and, like and all this. In, like yeah, five, like, six days, right? Yeah, yeah, five, six shows into a twenty six show tour. And, Is this Europe? Uh, uh the States. 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 Yeah, and we we're on the opposite side of the country or well no, we we're in like Texas. Like yeah, Texas. El Paso, Texas. Yeah. That's right. So still like two thousand miles away from home mm-hmm. and we're just like shit, like what are we gonna do? And then afterwards, like trying to rethink, it's like like, do we want to give this another chance? Like, do do we, you know, try this with Kenny and give it like one big last, you know, swing mm-hmm. and and hope for hope for something good here to happen? You know, so it really was like a big, uh, you know, reflection of where we were at. What made group. it worth giving it one more swing? Like I, I believe Sentinel should have. I'm very glad you guys did. Like I don't want to be like, yo, you guys should. What made you do the right to keep yeah, going? Yeah. You know? I agree, you guys said that. But what was in I your was head gonna was I was gonna say it was the material alone, but Chris had me in like this, like yeah. real. I, when, I, I want like, someone to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I, I was like, Uncle, Uncle, <laughs> let me up. And he was like, All right, gotcha. I was like, All right, I'll do it. <laughs> No, but it's it, a good I, point. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, I think it was just like the material alone that we were like already so pumped on, and we wanted to keep it going because like we were even pumped on like the material outside of this EP, and we wanted to really give it one more go and let it see the light of day. Yeah, the bond like the three of us have, I feel like too, like just like before, I feel like we were just like we've been doing this for close to like ten years at this point. If not, yeah, it is ten years. So mm-hmm. it's just yeah, like, a little more. Yeah. And like me and him are the two original members. Gabe basically might as well be. Yeah, he's been in band for seven years. So I like, put in the work, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> We're slowly <laughs> reeling members of Sentinels out here. <laughs> damn, it's like the three of us, and then like he said, the material that that we had ready, like not ready, but like what in between us getting like the the mixes from Collapse and like us leaving the studio, I like went on some. I don't even know how I got this like like jolt of energy to write all this stuff mm-hmm. and then we wound up by that time that that happened when we were figuring the whole vocal situation and like the tour and everything we had like 13 songs in the vault that mm-hmm. we were all super stoked on and now we have like close to 20 kind of thing um so it, there there was just a lot pushing us still to do it and like i mean we all love music we yeah. all love playing music and like yeah i couldn't imagine doing this without any of them and then the style that we're playing too it's like it only fits with them you know yeah. <laughs> have fun it, finding it, someone else to play <laughs> these parts yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I've had this like moment. Like, uh, I'm 27. I assume we're all kind of the same ages, give or take yeah. a couple years. Uh, I've had this moment. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> 30. <laughs> uh, close 30, enough, though. 30, 30, I've, I've had this thing of like, yeah, I've started this when I was, I guess, 20. So, yeah, close to 10 years now. But it's like, I feel like I'm just now gaining enough momentum to really give it a try. And I think I'm wondering, I think it sounds like you guys are saying a similar thing of like, you've been doing it for a while, but there's a part, or in me, there's a part of like adulthood of like, I feel like I'm finally figuring it out. Like I thought I'd figured it out plenty of times before now. And now it's like, 
oh, this world finally like makes sense to me. Like the the top tier of it doesn't seem mystical. It seems like they are real people. Like there is a real opportunity. I guess is that kind of does that feel true for you guys that you're like maturing into this and getting ready to yeah give it the best try you've ever given it. Yeah, but without, no, without yeah, without doubt. doubt. Yeah, yeah. I would. like especially because I mean the in limbo like that whole portion of just like time where it's just like just stressing, not knowing what to do, and then it's just like with like the amount of music we have, just mm-hmm. like in like the vault and just like like ready to go kind of thing. It's just I'm like I feel like this is probably the most stoked I feel like I've been, especially just like with yeah. all of the new music. It's definitely like our favorite, like my favorite stuff we've ever done. So. Given how deep the vault is, what made these three songs the one to come back with? It was like on this, like when Josh Pulgarin and Scott called me and you that one night. It seemed yeah. like you off the, the get, you knew which ones. And it. It, it to me, it just felt like they they went together the best. the The interlude situation was the thing to be worked out the most. But to me, I, I felt like if we're gonna release two songs to kind of give a hint of like where we're going, you know, I felt like Nomadic was, you know, uh, a big push in in that direction. You know, with a lot of the uh, like the. He- heavy emphasis on on uh, atmosphere, still with like the hints of chaos, but then you know these melodic moments, like the, like the blast beat section or whatever. Like there's a lot of influence from you know worlds like that, and I don't know. I, I think it just kind of like those two worked for me, I, and I had been listening to those for the longest time. I was like, I feel like these are the oldest, and there's something about these two that need to go together. And so. I feel like this. The idea of this EP has been floating around for like over a year. Like mm-hmm. even with our last vocalist, that was the plan originally yeah. was to like come back from that tour, <clears throat> figure out the singles, have something out by like Christmas of what twenty twenty two, I guess. You Something made it by Christmas, like and then yeah, and then yeah, right, year later before Christmas, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then it finally happened. So we we had some time to sit on that idea, and maybe yeah, maybe that and helped a little bit. Of course, like to anyone who's watching this and, and is like, so you had this long and you only put out three songs. Imagine being in our shoes, okay, yeah. like, yeah. and just being so like, yeah, we're going to just have yeah. a whole album ready with another new vocalist, and, yeah. you know, it's all going to go over well. It's like, no, you got to test the waters a yeah. little bit and, you know, see if we can even do this to begin mm-hmm. with. So mm-hmm. it, it really was, like, uh, not only just, uh, like, a planned thing of, you know, let's put out these two singles with, you know, th- this interlude in the middle, but, like, it was almost more... It almost worked out this way better than it did like maybe say Josh was still in the band because it's like now it gives us a real reason to like put these songs out and you know test it out with people and I think overall people seem to be stoked so yeah it seemed very overwhelming release it was awesome oh, yeah. yeah it was like when we announced him it was like like the the week of us announcing Josh leaving and then announcing him with the glitch music video that was like the most engagement our pages like ever seen hell yeah which is yeah. Kenny fangirls over here. Hey. <laughs> That's a nice little pat on the back for you, Kenny. I, I got a few fans. We go to this, <laughs> we an invent show. We walk in, we're in Philly. Literally just like, it's me, him, my girlfriend, and then my bartender for my job. And literally we like walk in, not even in the freaking venue for like two minutes. And like, this one guy just walks up to Kenny. He's just like, are you Kenny from like Dead Vectors kind of thing? And there's like three more people just like swarm up. Start yeah. taking pictures. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I play bass. Yeah. Yeah. My Me. ego, my Me. ego was insane that night. That, that was way. terrible. Yeah. 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 Since yeah. a lot of missing Dude, missed whole... loadings, I feel. Whoa. <laughs> If I wasn't so exhausted there, I would I, I would have been I would have been there to knock your ego right back down, pal. I'm like, get humble. What do you think this is, pal? And can is this like your first rollout with like a? We went to Josh and uh, Scott coming in the background in the sharp tone. Is this your first rollout like with a label involved? Is this like yeah. your first like big boy kind of step up? Has there yeah. been a lot of? This is like my first like band with a label or anything along yeah. those lines. Uh, all my other projects have just been kind of like DIY. Mm-hmm. So I saw the de- yeah I checked out Dead Vector Dead stuff Vector's on the yeah. way. Yeah. Rip yeah. Dead Vector is <laughs> it's just years, <laughs> we have more music yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure the patience is just what's killing you the most is like Dead Vector's puts an album out every month dude <laughs> we, you have to wait like eight, eight months for we us wrote an <laughs> album <laughs> in two days and we put it out that month Jesus. with you guys it's like we've made three songs and I had to wait like a goddamn year are you kidding me <laughs> you'll you'll probably get to put out thirteen songs before we decide to break up so. yeah okay. <laughs> What's like the, uh, there's pros and cons to each, right? I'm sure there's benefits writing the things in two days and putting out the next day. And there's a benefit to being more slow and tactical. Like where do you kind of fall in a, in a perfect world? If you could write the Sentinels game plan for the next year, are you taking them to the studio tonight and putting an album out tomorrow? Or are you <laughs> not not with this stuff. No okay. way. You have to think about it. Yeah. Like there's so much shit going on. Like uh, with like a lot of the stuff for my project, Dead Vectors, it's a little bit more straightforward. And the vibe that we, 
we go a little, a little, we get a little crazy. A little like, curveball every now and then. Yeah, the vibe that we've always had is we just show up at the studio and write it on the spot, mm-hmm. and that that's it. And, and is studio like is the producer also in the band? Yeah, that, it's just me and Aaron. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. so Aaron are just like the duo. They just you know, yeah, dude. They could sit there and just be like spit a whole song out like two yeah. hours. No duo is we, more we write like, real well together. The guitar and they're just like click go and just like it's done. Mm-hmm. Um. Hell yeah, I'm changing gears here. I know you guys have been touring. Uh, I know you've been touring with Lorna Shore, Dave. You've been drum teching, I believe, for Lorna. I, ju- I just did uh, one, one a little bit. With okay. That, yeah. uh, and I think you were with Volumes in Australia, maybe? Yeah, Somewhere? I was uh, I was in Australia with Volumes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, my question here is, I guess, as we've worked, and I assume you guys have also yeah, worked with other bands, whatever. My, my question here is, like, uh, I've had the idea that I should work on my business and not just for it. And I think when you're working with other bands, you must get the chance to see like from behind the scenes, or I guess even when you're on stage, like you get a chance to observe how other bands work and how they, uh, how they operate and what they do well and where they don't do great and how they count in merch and all the little stuff that doesn't get talked about publicly. Has that been a really ch- good chance, like in Rich Sentinels to go out and like fill in and try these different opportunities with much bigger touring acts and then come back and yeah, does that, does it feel like you bring a lot home with you? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, just from like even my drum tech and the thing with them, um, like it, it kind of gave me like a behind the scenes view on like what a band at that level operates like. And yeah. then uh, most recently I, I filled in for a few shows for Varials on the, on a tour. That Hell yeah. Just I about so that. Yep. that was also nice in a way because it gave me like this, you know, fill in perspective mm-hmm. on things too. But like I could still see how they, they run their ship and it's still a little different, but like, you know, it gives me ideas on how to like, you know, run our ship a little bit better, you know, because, you know, both those bands are doing things very right. So, yeah, you know, it gives me like little homework to do. Something yeah. I always wish I, I'm always, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not jealous of you guys. What's the, whatever. It's something I wish I could like emulate in my own life. It's like, I wish I could show up on more video sets that I'm not a part of and just be a part of and get a sense of like, yeah, what do you do when you have 12 hours to work? And how do you spend those 12 hours? And I feel like it would really benefit me to look in, yeah, learn about how I do it. And I assume, yeah, as you're touring with volumes, like you must get a, a real nice, sense of yeah these guys have been doing it for a life they're doing it forever like you must really pick up on yeah what this thing looks like when it's a perfectly operating machine yeah i was gonna say like the i you know grew up listening to volumes i'm sure all these guys did of course went to see them growing up and this and that um so like meeting them and doing that whole experience with them i was like dude all like the, they've been a band for like 15 years or something like that they've seen so much stuff they've done so much tours a lot of music that they put out and whatnot yeah. um and to see them be as like chill and as like welcoming as they are. I wasn't surprised, but I was just like, this is awesome. That yeah. This, this band is still as cool and humble as they were back in the day. I'm, I'd imagine. What's you know? the 32nd version of how that came together? How did you end up uh, in so, Australia with them? Uh, we know, um, Steve from Chelsea grin mm-hmm. and he's good friends with the volumes guys. And one day we just, it, it was like three or four weeks before the tour and Steve hit me up and was like, Hey, do you want to fill in for volumes? They're looking for like a filling guitarist, like a, a some, like a couple of people backed out and they just need, they need someone to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to do it. And, you know, three or four weeks, that's like for a headlining set, that's too. Nothing. So it's like yeah. 14 songs in three and a half, three Chris and a half or four weeks. Stressed. I was stressing. <laughs> yeah, it was all about year two. So I like it was just that's... me sitting there and drilling it every day. And then like when I filled in for Invent back in May, it was kind of the same situation where like it was a little bit like last minute. So like with Invent, I learned six songs in like two weeks or two and a half weeks so it was a grind that i wasn't like unfamiliar with but (laughs) it was still like a a a hard like okay if i do this i need to like sit with all this stuff yeah just sit there for like eight hours a day yeah it was like at the end of the night like yeah can we just hang out can i get get out of this house brain is fried yeah (laughs) there's such a weird duality there where you guys talk about we have 20 songs in the vault but I also feel like the music industry happens like this, where it's you get a call and in two weeks your whole life fucking changes. And it's such a weird thing where it's so planned out, it's so premeditated, but it's also this fucking chaotic thing that just on the flip of a dime it it's, just changes it's for it. Like literally a month before like the, the month before volumes asked me to to play with them. Mm-hmm. Uh my, me and my mom were talking and she was just like, ah, oh, we we're talking about the places that I've gone, like Europe, this and that mm-hmm. with the band. And she was like, oh, I would love for you to go to Australia. It's like my favorite place. And I was like, I don't know if that's going to happen, Mom. Like, I don't think, like, with Sentinels, like, we don't know. That's a very expensive trip. And, like, we don't know how our fan base is out there or anything like that. So it would be, like, more of a risk than anything. Mm -hmm. But then, like, a month later, someone's like, hey, do you want to go to Australia? And I'm like, (laughs) crazy. It just worked out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's, like, talked into new existence almost. When he he told me that it was, like, volumes asking to film, I was like, yeah. It was, like, sick. I was like, I didn't even know they announced the tour. He's like, yeah, it's in Australia. I was like. 
What? <laughs> like, I was like, you nice. better go, yeah. and you better punch a kangaroo. Got <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, no fights with Just kangaroo. Yeah. And you guys did UK, but you haven't done anything more international. Yeah. It's yeah, we've done like a good scoop of like Germany, UK, Italy, Switzerland, France, uh, Switzerland, France. Austria, Sweden. That was awesome. Yeah, Czech Republic. Poland. Danny, can I put you guys on the spot? What stands out from Europe last trip, and what are you looking forward to as we go back to it in a little? Is there a country? Is there a city? Is there a place of food? What stands out? Prague Absolutely. was pretty awesome. Prague yeah, is probably one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. In my Bring the shit. Yeah, right. Antwerp, Belgium was crazy cool too. That was awesome. And then Poland. First it's off, best, the cathedrals the over there are insane. Oh, yeah, that, that restaurant is the only redeeming. <laughs> like, like, so going. we played the venue in Poland twice. The first, both times we actually had the worst fucking luck. First time we played in Poland, literally like our gear just like it was like a wattage like power issue kind of thing and all of our gear just went out literally like, exploded we were like <laughs> it was like intro halfway through this uh second song and literally just went Boo. That's and like i'm a- like sitting there and all you just hear is like dave just like with his kicks and i'm just like mm-hmm. me and chris look at each other like what the fuck sound check went fine sound check was yeah. great sound check was fine but then That's when the real show came it was sentinels unplugged or <laughs> aka me unplugged it was MTV, yeah. yeah it was yeah. it was rough that but, was uh, uh, time that happened. those are rented kick, back line your kick line went out our second time oh yeah i think like my trigger went out but i like i'll take that over fucking the whole <laughs> show yeah out. when you're back is that a rented back line that goes out or is that your yeah. stuff well yeah it's, it's our gear that we bring but uh it's like rented cabs and everything and then it's just like the whole like power, like voltage in yeah. Europe is a lot lower than it is here. Like on like a power conditioner, it'll read like 120 here. And like when you go to Europe, it's like 80, 85. And it's just like when you have so much stuff running into that kind of thing, you run that risk. If it's like if it drops below 80, you're like, eh. I had uh, an experience last year. And I should be a little bit vague about this just to protect the people who need to be protected here. But I was working at a show and like in an hour ish before the show, they're doing like final sound check, just touching everything. And I think someone like turns on the generator when it wasn't supposed to be on. Like they were uh, something, someone turned something on too soon. And the whole venue just like dot everything. <laughs> like like all, it went black in the venue. Like, unbe- lights like off. I had never have seen something go dead that like it was crazy to watch this whole oh, thing. And God. I later learned from someone working that like all the stacks of speakers are blown like gone. So someone flicked a switch and just sent 100k down the drain or something. So when you're describing the back line, oh, I'm like, oh uh, yeah, like, that's what I thought it was rented. Like, was that your cab that got no, blown up no, or just was, someone? It was our Axe Fix. It was our Axe Fix, which is even more worrisome because we're also tone in Europe. Central. And we were just like, uh, like, wait, it's not like we can just like go to a guitar center or like get yeah. something shipped or like whatever. Yeah, it's so not a readily available me and piece of gear. shitting bricks. I was just like, I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. What's the solution? We literally, we went to the freaking, <laughs> Luck. We, literally, we went to the venue the next day and they had like a voltage like uh, tester kind of thing. And He's like from the company that they sent out to like and check the gear. He checked it and it was just fine. It just all of a sudden just started fucking working. So it just, just turned like, off and it, yeah, no yeah. issue. It I think needed, it, was, it, it was like, well, I need a break. Like, it was the power conditioner that blew, right? The power conditioner and then like my axe or our axe fix because we split it. Um, started smoking. It, it started smoking like you'd smell smoke. But then also like on the front of the axe fix, there's like the input signal. Like when you when you mm-hmm. strum or whatever, yeah. like a green light goes up and down with what you're playing. I got a couple this of them right was, here. There you are, right there on that screen right there. It um, but it, it was like pulsing. It was like doo doo. And then there was like a the weird sound coming was. out of your cab too. It's yeah, just like, like just a weird hum. And yeah, we were just like, oh no, this is, we're, we're fucked. Yeah, and like not only with like us not being able to find gear like ready in a guitar center or just a music store. Like if we borrowed someone else's gear, that could have potentially helped. But at the same time, like our set is very like like patch driven. Mm-hmm. So like a lot of our stuff, like we drop tune during the set, we do like clean stuff during the set. So we'd have to reconfigure the laptop completely to a new yeah. thing. It would take probably a day or two to even reconfigure. So it, it was just like, what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> that situation yeah, that got real lucky. That's, that. like, All right, we're That's like out. a best case scenario. Yeah, and, and just to wrap up my story, the, the last piece of this was an hour of them going, where the fuck do you, so, like people are going to be here in an hour and we can't cancel this thing. Where do you go find this? So I think someone drove from where we were to a city like half an hour away, just happened to find someone who wasn't using theirs and brought it back and then got it set up like on light speed. Like it was the craziest thing that they fixed it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was Jesus. the most expensive mistake I've ever witnessed in my entire <laughs> life. So I'm very yeah. glad that you guys didn't wow. have the same fucking yeah. torturous fate there. <laughs> if we blew the out. power, <laughs> like the whole venue in Poland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Oops. Like, yeah. Um, before we got into that, Ken, I think you're starting to say something about Prague. Someone else that stood out oh, in yeah. Europe. Something. Oh, Belgium was great. Just like the city in general was oh, beautiful. That was the, that was the last show we played, I think. 
I don't know. It just yeah, felt Belgium like a, a nice last like one. final yeah. hurrah to the tour. It was just a great day. Like that that place was awesome for sure. Yeah. Germany goes off. They they, they really <laughs> love their music, man. They're 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 a good time. So yeah. Is there is there any comparison between like European shows and American shows? And I absolutely okay. It's like it, here and there almost. In in my ignorant brain, it feels like both of them are too big to compare. It feels like we're yeah. It feels like comparing like what's harder, football or basketball? It's like well, can't fucking answer that. Yeah. Same but different. Answer. Yeah. I don't know. In the states, I think I think first off, just like the the way people like do their their dancing, you know, and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. In in Europe, it's a lot of push pitting and. Okay. You know, having to be very direct about, you know, telling the crowd to move, like, sometimes. And, and if, especially when they don't know you. Which is weird, because I, I think there are more alcoholic crowds. So it would be weird <laughs> that they have to be told to move and, like, oh, told to engage. It feels like they're ready to, like, crack off at a bar anytime. Oh, yeah. You would you'd uh, think maybe, but I, I don't know. It was I'm, very weird and, like, crowd interaction, for I'm sure. I'm saying this as a soccer fan, Dan. I'm sure you know the same shit of, like, all the hooligans, all like, the fans oh, and the crowds. Yeah. Like, those are the same people going to your shows, and those motherfuckers don't need any reminder to <laughs> act a fool. Like, they're ready to go. <laughs> That's why uh-huh. in England, they literally, like, you can... They don't let you bring, like, your drinks into this, like, uh, into, the, into your seats. Oh, you really? You literally can only... You can drink like during halftime or before the game, but you can't bring your beer or anything to the seats because they don't want just people. But everyone probably just gets shit faced beforehand. As I'm saying, it seems like a hopeless battle. Like here. Be like, oh, so just get shit faced outside, <laughs> then come in, yeah, like racing and, and drink as fast here, as possible. I'll sprint during halftime, back up, have another two, and then I'm coming back. Yeah. To that same point, I heard a story the other day about uh, Invincible, like the Philadelphia Eagles movie that came out. I don't know, Mark. Yeah. Um, the, when they were casting that, they wanted to cast real Eagles fans. They're filming it in Philadelphia, and they're trying to set up like a scene of the top section of the stadium. So they put out a casting call saying, like, hey, if you're a Philadelphia fan, show up here at 8 a.m. And, of course, yeah, everyone who shows up at 8 a.m. So. has never gone home that night. They're just showing up after the whole night. So you end up with hundreds of just the craziest, drunkest Eagles fans trying to be in a movie. And then the casting director being like, no, F- everyone F- go. F- yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, fans. Same thing. Fans are, yeah, top tier. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> So Europe needs a reminder to to act up sometimes. A little bit, yeah. Like, and sometimes like they'll just get on stage and just dance behind one of you for too long <laughs> until until they have to be like escorted yeah, off. Until someone comes, yeah. there's like, hey man, you gotta go. You're like tripping our cables and shit. And there's like, you know, you know, like a big smile on their face. Yeah, like, like Travis or something. Like, yeah, you know, like, that was in the no, states. The, I think well, that, was that was in Brooklyn. That, that was a that was a different oh. one. But yeah, the, the most recent one I remember was when we were in. Uh, I think it was. Uh, oh my god, Munich, that same place we played oh, back backstage? the backstage. Yeah, and like this kid just got on stage oh, and was just like, that <laughs> you know that same kid. During the set, like I was on the riser screaming, climbed on the riser with me while I was screaming. He just like stood up on the riser. I was like, "What do I do?" That was that was after him being up on stage for like a minute. All right, so like you would think usually a few seconds and like jump back in, but he was just like, "Nope, he just my stage, bitch." And I was like, (laughs) "Okay, in the band now." Yeah, (laughs) he paid for a ticket. (laughs) I'll say, yeah, but that and then their brutal honesty. Oh my sometimes God. that that's different i that's remember hilarious like when we were over there our first time with fit for an autopsy and enterprise earth this kid came over and was like gushing about how amazing enterprise earth was and he looks at me like like right aren't they amazing i was like yeah dude they're great and he looks at me he's like you guys will uh descent <laughs> and i was like thanks and then gabe from enterprise was like <laughs> you're decent and i was like it's cool i strive for decency and he was like oh sorry i meant you uh the best. <laughs> I was like, holy was so much shit. Worse. Yeah. I was like, face. dude, it's fine. I'll take the decent. Just walk away. Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. The honesty over there is absolutely, it's the best. It's yeah. Then the um, merch, too. Like, it, th- I think some of them think that there's like a spread of stuff in the van or in the trailer <laughs> yeah. that they don't see. So they're like, do you have this in, you know, mm-hmm. like green? It's like, we, we have like, like no. three t shirts. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Or I'm like, what size are you? And they're like, <laughs> I don't know. And then and I'm like, you, like do what, you size do you, what size do you think I am? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to like insult yeah. you over here and be like, hey, you're like, can a, I try this? Like a five X or something. <laughs> like, it's just like, yeah, I have no idea. They're like, I don't know, maybe, maybe M. And they, they say M or L. There's no like medium large because obviously it's like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, can I get an S? Or a like, bargain sometimes, sometimes too. I think. What's the? the oh yeah, they'll <laughs> bargain you sometimes too. You that get makes some sense. Thirty five. Like, how about twenty seven? Twenty seven. It's thirty five. What's the tipping deal? So I know there's a 
recently a con- uh, big conversation about tipping culture uh, here and European bands not quite understanding it. When you're over there, I assume they're not tipping. So then do you add five bucks to each T-shirt and expect you're not getting tips? Or how does that play out? No, over in Europe, you just kind of like give a, a like a blanket price like yeah. for, you know, items like T-shirts will be like. Like yeah, 25 I mean, yeah. or whatever, you know, like well, 30, yeah, like 30, 30 or something. I don't want to and, hold you to anything. Yeah, I don't want you to say no, something no, here. No, then you show up there like 1500, <laughs> whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and I think Switzerland because they're, they're, uh, the their uh, currency, the yeah, the crones crazy. So, like, our like our hoodies thing. were up for 17,000 <laughs> like crones. I was like, what the fuck? I'm looking at the merch, and I'm like, yep. Dave, what the fuck is this? And he's just like, see, like the currency <laughs> difference. I'm like, it's like five. It was like five or six thousand yep. dollars for like a t shirt. Yeah, like I was CD like, was like so confused. Two thousand. I was, I, I was like, God damn it. I, I was like, I never thought I'd say I can't wait to get back into like Euro <laughs> land. Like, that was crazy. My uh, mom's from Chile. So, when we would go down to visit her family like, every couple of years when we were growing up, and they used pesos, and at the time, the conversion was like 750 pesos to a dollar. So, mm. it was the same thing where you go into a fucking store Bingles. and Gatorade's like five thousand. And you're like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah, right? It can't be. It's, and, crazy. Yeah, it's just being bad at math and dumb American right. shit. <laughs> Yeah, there's absolutely like no tipping though in uh, in Europe. So like we would put out a, a jar, but like people would just come over and give you a beer instead. I'm like, I'll take it. That'll work. Yeah, I'll it's take like, that. Yeah. It's like fifteen dollar tip right there. Technically. Yeah, like a beer is beer is super. Is cheap beer cheaper Europe. over in Hell yeah. Europe? Like for like venue prices? I know venue pricing in America is like fifteen yeah. or something. I have no idea. I, I would forget. some days I would just be like, oh, just run my car, brother. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I was, I was like, like, I'm at home. Just to get me drunk or something. <laughs> But yeah, um, transitioning gears here. Uh, my my note here is that content is king, and I've had this idea. I think you guys have done a really good job of putting up vocal covers, guitar, bass, drums. Like I feel like I always see you guys putting up and promoting the songs. I think uh, I also hear a lot of bands, and myself included, like that's not fun to do. It's not exciting to make. Like it's a it's a chore that needs to be done, and it's the best way to grow a band and engage with your audience in this day and age. But it's not an exciting. It's not a fulfilling thing. Like, where are you guys in this like this content world? Are you happy to keep putting out covers? Is it like a tedious thing that you you know you have to do? Is it necessary evil? Is it something that's worthwhile and exciting? I was kind of stoked to do mine. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was having fun. They're like, yeah. hey, we need you to do this. I was like, fucking shit, yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's go. An excuse to show off. Yeah. yeah, I think one of like the especially now, I think one of the craziest things is like the Instagram algorithm. So like, I found this out because of you the other day when we we had this plan where like. Obviously, it's not going to be a plan anymore because the algorithm sucks. But uh, we're going to do a plan where, like, after the album or after the EP dropped, every member does, like, a video every week. Mm-hmm. to kind of just keep building traction and get attention to the EP. He did his first one, and it did, like, really good. I did mine, and it did, like, almost as good as yours or something. And then I was talking to Dave because we were trying to do it, like, Wednesdays or something mm-hmm. like that. And I was like, oh, did you happen to do it? And then... You can explain the algorithm. Yeah, I was like, there. first off, a couple things were against me. I didn't get around to it. Uh, but <laughs> so also, it's everyone else's fault, but now I <laughs> got that out of the way. I was like, but also, I was like, I was looking, and because it's like we're doing it on like a scheduled time, it's like the algorithm almost learns that about you and works against you. They're like, oh, you want to release a video every week? Mm-mm. I don't... It's 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 so strange, like but like that's time, what it like seems noon. like when we do yeah. it. Yeah, And everyone says that reels now get the, the biggest interaction out of anything. And then we start doing reels like kind of in a row, and then it's almost like the algorithm thinks, "Oh, you're doing a bunch of reels in a row. Let me just knock it down a couple pigs, <laughs> yeah. make it lose some hope." And I'm like, "What the hell?" So I was like, "All right." Also, these songs are the hardest I've ever had to play. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not putting something out unless it's like bulletproof. Sure, so man. I've really got to work at these again. So uh, you know, trying to find the time like between work and, and and other life things, I'm like, okay, I gotta sit down and really grind the song out and. You know, and I want it to be like worth it when it gets put out. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it is exhausting for sure to, to think that it's like the music isn't like the most important part anymore. Mm-hmm. It's the fucking content. It's you know because we're like in a very like consumer heavy uh, world now. So it's all just like, all right, what do you got for me today? Yeah, <laughs> cool. I don't know. I feel like I try my best to ignore the algorithm, and I I go to like my. Uh, one of my favorite podcasts is Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast. I don't know if oh, anyone else listens to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And like one of the things to me is like it's, they have zero clips. They have like no, they have no promotion, no advertising. Their artwork has been the same since 2014. Like they've done nothing. And I think as of like six months ago, and I don't know if it's still the case, but they were the biggest Patreon on the website. Like, they, their platform was the most subscribed on the platform. And I don't really know who else is on Patreon. Like I'm, I'm sure it's not only fans tier numbers, but like <laughs> it's a huge thing. And for them to get that far without doing anything is like. 
uh, not the algorithm doesn't matter, but to some degree, it's like just make good shit and people will come. Like I think yeah. with Matt and Shane, you know, they get help from the the cancellation, and all the other stuff, and the, yeah, they're funny and they're great. But like, it's always been like a, a reassuring model to me of like you know, like it was my show, right? Like I'm always thinking about like should I rebrand it? Should I add? Uh, I don't like the the. Uh, music in the back of the clip. So I'm always thinking like, yeah, what should the next one be? Should I change the name? I think the name's too long. Should I shorten the name? And it's like, the more I sit with it, it's like, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, I'll, I'll, this will be a good episode and people will watch it or they won't. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not because of the music. It's not because of the art. It's not the title. And I think in the context of these playthroughs or just in content, it's like, the algorithm can beat us down, but it's our job to just keep putting out good shit and saying, I don't care if this got 10 views. Like, I believe in this. And if I just keep believing in this thing, then other people will too. And there's some yeah. like some comfort in that to me of like this post sucked, but I believe in it. So that makes it okay. Like the numbers yeah. were bad, but it's yeah. good for me. Cause I, I even told him um, when we were, when I was, I made this crazy promise to, mm -hmm. to Instagram. I was like, Hey, uh, <laughs> for all the songs that I didn't get to do a professional playthrough for on class by design, I'm going to do a DIY one with just my mm -hmm. iPhone and my little mm -hmm. small DIY recording rig. Yeah. Yeah. And I did four videos. So I think, yes, yeah, so I did playthroughs for three officially. And then I, that left me with like nine, nine. nine left after that. So I was like, okay, so nine more videos to make. So I did the four. The first one was the most like engaged thing I ever put out. Mm -hmm. I was getting notifications for it for like two, three months. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. And then the next one I did, I think it was like a week or two weeks later, literally half the engagement. I was like, son of. Bitch. And as I kept going, they all just kind of like plateaued at that point. So I was like, I. Man. So I was like, all right, well, I'll get around back to it when I feel like. It. Were they four? Uh, was the camera in the same place for all four videos? They were, yeah. My guess is that people think it's the same video. I think when you're doing something like that, mm -hmm. you move the camera each time. Uh, there was a band that did a rollout like this, and I don't want to say their name. They're a big touring act, and I'm happy to tell you guys later, but I don't feel like putting, throwing someone on the bus <laughs> publicly right now. Um, but it's a big Peter. touring band who's been on Warp Tour many years. Yeah, Warp Tour era band. Uh, and they rolled out an album in the last couple of years, and they put out 10 music videos. And it was to this idea of like, oh, we need more content. Let's, it's all visual content. Let's do it. But the, all the 10 videos were on the same set. So all the thumbnails oh. are all identical, and they all fucking tanked. And to me, it's like, oh, I don't damn. think that they're bad. I think that they just didn't make these unique. So as you're scrolling through YouTube, you scroll, you see the thumbnail, and you go, oh, I've already seen that. And you don't stop to read the title and go, oh, no, that's the seventh song on the album, and I only listened to the first three. Like, it, yeah. it waters it down. And so I think there's some some medium there of like it's worth continuing to do it but it's a, a game of making people think that this is new and exciting and creative and not letting people think that they've seen this when they have it right like they yeah. they haven't seen that song they don't know it but yeah uh, of course my drum room is so there's such a lack of space to try to move things around i'm like yeah. great i'm like if this one they're gonna be looking up at me i'm gonna be like, <laughs> like if i put it anywhere else yeah, we get that, that 360 yes. cam. Yeah. yeah. Pull the alpha wolf. There thing, is yeah. something to be said there, though, that like uh, a dog shit video would almost do well. Like there's something to be said for holding yeah. the phone in your mouth and playing it. And it would oh, be terrible. Yeah. Be I would be It'd pissed be... off as a video person. Yeah. But like. <laughs> Put all this work in. This is yeah. this that's, it's always the thing that you're like, it is. try it out. I think so. Yeah. I think that's where TikTok has thrived is it's, it's this casual thing. And I've. Uh, DSLR stuff doesn't do well online. It's the, it, I think it's the idea that like it's it's polished and professional. So when they see a nice camera, they think of me. When they see an iPhone, they think of whoever the thing is actually of, right? So when you're filming on an iPhone, they see you and go, oh, I've been there. I know what this looks like. But when they see it on my camera, it's like they think I'm tricking them. I'm lying to them somehow. Mm -hmm. And I am. That's exactly why we have <laughs> nice cameras. That's exactly what nice cameras are for. But I think that's the, yeah, the strength of the iPhone. And I think if I'm if I'm in a band right now, that's an exciting place of like, oh, people want the thing that I actually have now. I don't need to go out and find people like me or Raquel or whoever to get a playthrough or a photo done. Like, they yeah. almost want this like kind of casual amateur version of it. Mm -hmm. that's what yeah. It seems, yeah, that's true. Good point. Um, yeah, but now it's like I heard something the other day, like going back to the, the algorithm really quick. Is if it Instagram and Twitter is like tracking how much you're on that account, using it, like interacting with other pages, mm -hmm. liking, doing whatever. And then if you're on, like, let's say, like, Sentinels, if we're, none of us are, like, on it on a daily basis, scrolling and liking stuff, Instagram notices that and kind of takes you out because you're not mm -hmm. an engaging user, basically, or an yep. engaging account. So it's, yep. like, it's purposely being, like, oh, you don't want to be a part of this app, but we don't we don't want you anyways. Like, let's just pull you out of the algorithm a little it's bit. Such a I'm, like, what's, this algorithm changes every week. The yeah. inverse of that is on TikTok, and, again, this is all, I feel like it's all bro science. Everyone has their own bro science on the algorithm, <laughs> how it's supposed to work. But my bro science here uh, is this idea that on TikTok there's a, 
a really high probability that one of your first few videos does very well. And very well can mean a couple different things. Uh, but the the idea there in my brain is that like they know that once they give you that hit of dopamine of getting 10,000 views, 100,000, 5,000, whatever that thing is for you, you're hooked. You're going to keep coming back for that thing. And that's not a genuine success of a content. That's just TikTok saying, hey, we'll give you a little, little yeah, bump here just exactly. to, to start right. the addiction for us. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like Instagram is yeah on the opposite side of that of like, hey, if you're not addicted to us, we're going to bump you down. So the people who are addicted to us think it's even greater and they keep talking about exactly. it. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I guess, yeah, I guess the dilemma then is, is it worth selling my soul to Instagram and scrolling <laughs> and liking all well, this shit? TikTok is sneaky because mm-hmm. like we, we tried uh, doing like like we were trying to get the EP off the ground in any way. So it was like extra advertising this and that. Mm-hmm. So we went to TikTok and boosted a video. And I talked to one of my friends who's like really into TikTok and like is like kind of known on it. And he was like, dude, if you like pay for an ad, it slowly like it realizes that like, oh, you'll pay for something. Let's after this, yeah. if you want to do a natural video, then we're going to like tank on the, the actual algorithm. Yeah. So like TikTok Facebook is kind of did that too. Facebook too. It's yeah. Well, it, is TikTok too. and Facebook. Are they like... No, I that's think, Instagram. Oh, Instagram, it's, and, yeah, Facebook Instagram are the same. and Facebook. Yeah. 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 TikTok's overseas and Facebook is an American company. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Um, hell yeah, Kings. Um, what's uh, We're just about to our hour here. We're getting close to it. Uh, so as we wrap up, as we get out of here, uh, we kind of touched on Europe. I kind of got your sense of what we're looking for in Europe. Yeah. What are you guys looking at? Is there a, a city in Europe, a food in Europe? Is there something about uh, the upcoming future that we're most excited to return to? To have a kebab. Burgermeister. Burgermeister. Oh. What the hell is Burgermeister? Oh, it, it, it's 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 somewhere in Germany. Yeah. There's yeah. it's somewhere in Germany. Meister. But yeah. It was it like I know me and you definitely went. Did you guys go? I I in the two times I've been there, I've never got to go there. It's yeah. like there's no way to describe yeah. it without it sounding like nope. shitty. Like it's it's like man, really, I didn't get really to do good. shit in Europe. I'm the drummer. I don't get to do dick. <laughs> Are you surprised, man? It's like, I'm over here breaking down all my shit. You guys are having fun. So. <laughs> it's like a nice five guys, basically. That but the burgers out. are like thin, like smash burger almost. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the quality is just insane. It's it's really like in Chris like loves a, his burgers too. Love my yeah. burger is like we, we, we just look forward to the most American thing. shit over there. Apparently. What do you mean? When it comes to traveling, like all I really care about is eating Europe, eating so. good, <laughs> eating good, and coffee. And like Europe's pretty good with coffee. Yeah. There was no like bad coffee shops i don't think that we went to it's, it's not as easy as american coffee like to yeah. go somewhere with america i, I definitely want to make up for the netherlands the, the first time we went fantastic that's you know bo- we both days the day in amsterdam too though yeah, yeah so, so the first time we went we had an extra day because we flew into amsterdam but then even on the day we were pl- we played utrecht uh yeah. netherlands and we had to like walk into the city and get a COVID test to get back home and so, like, we basically walked through Utrecht and Amsterdam again. So, like, we, we got the most out of that. But the last time, I was sick. I, I had no energy whatsoever. So I just basically slept the whole damn day. So I missed out on, like, my favorite place in Europe. Like, everywhere else, I'm like, cool. My, yeah, nice yeah, castles. Like one, Sorry, there's yeah. nothing. Nice castle is such an absurd sentence. Yeah. I know. I, I, as weird as it is, I'm a guy who tours who doesn't care to sightsee. The pyramids are cool, but they're triangles. <laughs> yeah, like, nice triangles there, bub. No. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I just it's weird. Like, and and everybody, that, like all like friends from work and and home, they all are like baffled. When I say shit like that, but I tour, but yeah. I don't care to sightsee. I'm uh, not that type. We're not a sightseeing type no. band. If no, it's, if like it's you awesome, have your little then, things like yeah. in, in each territory, like when you went to see the Chelsea Stadium and, and whatnot. Uh, oh, it was, uh, not Chelsea, it was Arsenal? Arsenal Stadium. Arsenal, my bad. Kenny yeah. was looking for watches the whole time. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I don't do sports. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't care about sightseeing. I just want watches and burgers. <laughs> yeah. Fake Rolexes. Yes. Rolex. My freaking yeah. fake Rolex. Oh my god, dude. Is that a is that a thing you collect? Is bad. Do you collect good watches or just bad watches? Oh, I, I just was looking for like a good one just okay, as like yeah. a keepsake. Yeah. And I happened to find this dude that was selling fake Rolexes in London. And I mean, I he just couldn't. Sold I, sell. good, well, good I had a bunch man. of payout monies left. And I yeah. was just like, how much is this watch? And he's like, uh, it's 70 euros. I was like, is it real? And he's like, I'll give you real good price. And <laughs> yeah. He dropped it even like, like, lower. He was like, how about 55? 55? Yeah, he was like, 55? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, sold. So Which is I, funny because if you had an accent, he would have said 20. But because you're American, you got yeah. that huge yeah. mark over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was no way I could say no to a <laughs> he, Rolex. He, he knew that <laughs> he'd be new. And, you know? yeah. Does it function? Does it pass? It worked it for, like, for like two, three weeks, and then it stopped. 
I was honestly hoping that it never worked at all. Yeah. When I got it, I thought it would have just been so fucking funny <laughs> if like I got a fake Rolex and it just died immediately. <laughs> but it, it worked for a second. Yeah. You just yeah. walk away from the phone, has like a signal on it. It's like, nope, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I was rocking it for like it. two weeks. So I was just like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever done. I looked down one day. I was like, what the fuck? The time's like way off. Yeah. And then I realized that it would like click twice and then it would like hold for five seconds and then click twice. I was like. The, the funniest thing for me would be watching you go into like a real watch shop in the mall asking them to put a new battery in the, and the guy just going like <laughs> <laughs> like this is toast bud full is, ass, I'm, I'm stoked to go back to london I'm, I'm looking for that guy when i go back i'm in getting the same I'm, spot i'm either it's getting so a rolex nice. or an omega Wait, wasn't that in london yeah it was, yeah, it was all the street shops yeah because we were yeah. in that that weird like part of town and like yeah. there, there was all those like fake shops like there was a supreme flag like blowing out in the way like and i was like oh this is where i'm about to get some yeah. goods <laughs> someone says like boo preem on it or something <laughs> That's my kind of design. Yeah, that's right? about all I'm willing to pay for. That's as far as I'll go, dude. Uh, hell yeah, Kings. We are just about to our hour here. Uh, before we wrap up, where should people find you on social media, where they look out for, kind of go one by one here. So Dave, I'll start with you because you're closest to me. Uh, where do people find you on social media? Where do they look out for? On Instagram, you can find me at just Dave Sentinels. Um, and then you can find the band on like every platform, Sentinels NJ, like New Jersey. I'm only really on Insta, and it's just Kenny the Voyager. And then my other project is Dead Vectors, if you want to listen to that. Check them out. They're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got mixed reactions <laughs> here. So. <laughs> yeah, yes. actually don't. <laughs> just don't do it. How, uh, how long has Dead Vectors been going? Uh, since 2019. And okay. we have, I think, like 120 songs out now or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's, some light yeah. work. it's like 15 albums. Yeah, we, one year we were like, fuck it, let's put out 53 songs in one year. And... I don't think yeah. we have 53 songs that yeah. have been around for 10. So. We just went for it. Uh, I should have asked this sooner. I'll get to you guys plugged in a second. Is, dead, uh, is there anything before Dead Vectors? Like, is that our first into music? Or um, n- no, not really. Hell I mean, okay. I had, like, some really shitty, like, high school metalcore band. Name drop. That was the goodies Far name. From Home. <laughs> you look up oh Far From Home, The Purge. God. That's the first song I ever recorded. I it's on yet. YouTube. I'm about to it's terrible. It I'm glad <laughs> I asked. We got a speaker queued up. Yeah, we're going yeah, to bump. Yeah, it's bad. But, um, Hell yeah. Nah, it, That's going a long I, way since then. So yeah. something proud of. I, I had that and I didn't do anything for a while, but I was trying to start something. And I started Dead Vectors in roughly the same exact time I joined a band called Pathogen. We put out an album called Null Space, and that one's actually, that one's fucking crazy. The best album. Unfortunately, the band died, like, really quickly, but that yeah, album, yeah. in my opinion, is, like, crazy good. Hell yeah. Fire. Check it out. It's good listening to get to in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Danny, what you got for us? Uh, I'm only really on Instagram, and it's uh, Danny Sentinels. Hell yeah. Easy. You guys are all nice and simple. Right. You got that shit figured Chris out. Is the only Chris not refuses. Hey, he's not settled. Not just yet. Just too not yet. <laughs> just I'm wait until I put him in a chicken wing. On Instagram, too, and Chris a little bit of Twitter. Um, so, no, yeah, just, what's I, your I handle? My, I, it's Chris Dombrowski. It's my first and last name with no, no no period in between. It's like the first. It's like the first. And that name is very popular. Like there, it, it's like How? the Smith of Poland, like Dombrowski. <laughs> oh, really? So like, if you look up Dombrowski, it's like one of the most famous or like most oh, used last stinks. names out there. Well, I got a big shot so, over like, here. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, big okay, deal. Okay, okay, we got I'm shot. Polish as See, fuck. So uh, <laughs> the tour uh, gross is the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I was just Peter Jones. Like I'm, I'm gone. I'm gone in the wind. I'm gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> but the tour <laughs> gross is like, boy, if you learn this, it's like another super common name. Like, yeah, my name's pretty yeah. common. Like yeah, I said it was like the the first. So it. It'd feel weird to change it and then lose that, you know, the, mm-hmm. the first one. Uh, like, if you look up Chris Dombrowski, it's, like, a, a famous poker player, like, a famous, like, orchestral composer. Like, there's a bunch of they Chris Dombrowski's Hell out yeah. there. So I kept it at that. That's why I didn't change it. The Sentinels, Chris Sentinels, and two S's next to each other. Yeah, you know, Chris Sentinels, you know. Chris. <laughs> uh, and then on Twitter, I'm just Chris Bruce Riffs. That's Hell yeah. Chris Bruce Riffs. I, I'm just Chris Bruce Riffs. <laughs> but then, yeah. King. That's it. I think some of you guys are ghost or not ghost writing, producing, helping co-write songs for other people. Is there any other services we want to advertise here before we move on? Uh, no, I just I work out of um, Timber Studios. It's in Bayonne. Oh, yeah. um, work under Adam Sioki, um, goaded producer, just such a good dude. Uh, and yeah, I've just been co-writing and doing mixing stuff with him. So if you need if you need, if you need any if you need any mixing mastering any of that stuff any of that cool stuff songwriting yeah some songwriting yeah. let me know you know that's my plug that's yeah. my I mean Chris my Bruce Riffs <laughs> <So, laughs> Dream in Limbo uh, watch the music video what's the which song is the music video for Glitch, glitch. watch Glitch uh, 
go to Europe. <laughs> if you're yeah, in the to States, Europe. Don't fucking be, fly to uh, Europe. Don't be, don't be, go see that. It's yeah, Aaron's coming package. out to London. Yeah, Aaron's coming out. Yeah, Aaron's What's coming. your excuse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good place to end it, folks. What is your excuse for not making it to London? Comment your episode, excuse. Yeah, comment your excuse. <laughs> episode 48, something for everyone in the bag. Mission accomplished, boys. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Thank you. Thank you.